Hey everyone, this is Nicole, occupational therapist with Emerge Pediatric Therapy, and I'm here to talk to you today about the vestibular system. So what is your vestibular system? Your vestibular system is your sensory system that is responsible for recognizing when your body is in motion. Um, it is uh, really useful in helping us maintain our balance um, in, in regulating our postural muscles. Um, it helps uh, provide information about where your head is in space. And um, it's not uncommon for us to see that um, sometimes this, this vestibular sense becomes out of sync. And um, we commonly will see uh, children who are either over responsive or under responsive to vestibular information. Um, and a trained occupational therapist can help you determine if your child may be experiencing some over or under responsiveness in their vestibular system. Um, some things that you might notice if your child is over responsive to vestibular input is they might become easily motion sick, um, dizzy easily. They might actually avoid any movement activities, particularly activities where their feet are off the ground. Um, you might notice that um, when you're bathing them, they have a really hard time getting their hair rinsed because they have to bring their head back in space. Um, yeah, and you might see that they um, lose their balance frequently. For a sensory, for a vestibular over-responder, um, yeah, your, your goal is trying to find ways um, to help your child um, access movement in a way that is not overwhelming to their nervous system. So on the other end, we have our sensory under-responders, um, and these kiddos or adults are, um, they just seem to be on the go constantly. No amount of movement is enough movement. Um, they just constantly want to be in motion. They might be able to spin on a playground swing for hours and hours and never get dizzy. Um, they may lack some impulse control and safety awareness while moving. Um, and so for these kids, we are trying to figure out what is the just right amount of vestibular information to help organize their nervous system um, and to help their nervous system actually recognize that inf information so that they can utilize it meaningfully in their daily life. Um, so some quick ideas for how you can incorporate vestibular activities in your child's life every day. Um, so if you have a, an over-responsive, um, a child who's over-responsive to your vestibular information, um, you might consider doing some heavy work before engaging in movement activities. Um, we refer to heavy work as any kind of activity where you are pushing through your joints, you're getting a lot of compression through your major joints of your body. So it could be things like doing an animal walk, a push-up, uh, carrying something heavy, pushing something heavy, um, doing, a, doing a jump on a trampoline. Um, all of these things help, um, they provide proprioceptive input, which um, is your position sense. And that information can actually be really helpful in organizing the brain um, and preparing the brain for the, the movement or vestibular information that that child is about to receive. So that's often a really great um, preparatory activity. Um, if your child is really hesitant to move, um, one easy way to get some vestibular input in is to have your child work uh, in a prone position, so lying on their stomach on the floor. Um, they could be doing homework in that position or some coloring or some reading. Um, just by being on their belly, um, that process of pushing into the ground and coming upwards to maintain that position is getting some, some low level vestibular input as your child is moving their head in space, um, which is a great way to prepare your child's nervous system um, and help them just to start really experiencing vestibular input in a way that again is not overwhelming. Um, you can also sing songs that involve movement. Uh, maybe you consider uh, doing some row, row, row your boat where you and your child are sitting on the floor, rocking back and forth as you sing together. For your, your sensory under responders, um, we're thinking about ways that we can actually increase vestibular input throughout the day. Um, it could be something like doing somersaults or gymnastics. 
um, doing a blanket roll up where you put your child in a blanket, wrap them up like a burrito, save a little space at the end of the blanket to pull the blanket upward, rolling your child outward. They're gonna get some really nice input that way. Um, if, now for your child who may really seek intensity in their movement, um, you may consider being in an inverted position or with the head in upside down position. I would highly advise you not to try this without um, consulting your occupational therapist first as it is a really intense way of receiving uh, vestibular information. But doing things like um, playing a game of upside down soccer, have your child hang upside down from the couch. You set up a soccer goal on the opposite side of the couch. Your child has to push the soccer ball into the goal, maintaining that upside down position. Um, the game Twister is a great way for uh, getting both vestibular and proprioceptive information, um, particularly when you are in those upside down positions as usually you are in the game of Twister. Again, you're getting some, some more intensity to that vestibular input. And also yoga, there's lots of yoga poses that also um, can really provide some nice vestibular information. Hopefully this is just a little, a little taste of how you can get some vestibular input into your child's day. Um, if you have more questions about how to set up a sensory diet for your child or how to really assess uh, your child's sensory processing abilities, please re reach out to us at EmergePediatricTherapy.com and we'll be happy to um, figure out how to support you and your family. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in.